Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Build Sick Form Careers Cast, Careers Cast podcast um, with me, Mr. McLeod. And this is episode three. So, so far, we've heard from the world of finance and medicine. And this week, I'm really, really excited to welcome um, a good friend uh, from the civil service, Lynn. Lynn, it's great to have you with us. Oh, thank you for having me. It's really nice to take a step back. This is going to go out to our many students across um, our sick form. So it's it's really wonderful to have you um, on the show and to, to hear about what it's like working um, in the exciting world of the civil civil service. So um, I wonder if we could just start by finding out about your current role, your current job. Sure, yeah. Um, so I am what's called a deputy director in the Legal Aid Agency, which is part of the Ministry of Justice. So the Ministry of Justice is the kind of overall department and the Legal Aid Agency is one part of it. Um, I have two teams that work for me, so about 40 people in total. One of them does procurement of legal aid contracts, um, working with law firms across the country and barristers. And then another um, does policy work, so kind of advising ministers on policy questions relating to legal aid. And legal aid is what you get if you can't afford to pay for your own um, uh, legal work that needs to be done and you might have heard recently um, in the press well over the last few years it's been severely cut back so it, it's um quite a tricky climate to be operating in so that's I, what i'm doing at the moment wow you just returned to work as well from maternity leave i have yes i've been off for a year um on maternity leave with my third child um and i've gone back into a completely different world to the one that i left um a year ago so uh, everything that I do now in my current role, but about 80% of my role relates to the coronavirus and the government's response to COVID-19. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I, I, this is my first week and I'm trying to get to grips with uh, all of that. Um, all of the stuff that I was doing when I left is on pause, as I'm sure much government work is across the whole of um, the civil service. And now we're all focused on, well, my particular mm -hmm. role is about trying to help the legal profession survive through the coronavirus crisis so that we have enough lawyers to be yeah. doing legal aid work when it's finished. So supporting those more vulnerable people in our society yes, having a particularly exactly. yeah. difficult time. Oh, it sounds like a very senior and very high high pressure, high stress job. Um, how, how do you how do you manage? How do you balance your, your many different priorities? It's um so it is it, there's, there's all sorts um I kind of I'm juggling all the time. I guess my role um is more kind of strategic, trying to kind of work out the things that the team should be focusing on. I've got a, an amazing team of people that are experts in what they do, and um, they advise me. They and they kind of um, they do the kind of specifics of the work, and I um, am you know I'm responsible for kind of making decisions about how we take things forward. So I guess it's definitely not reliant on me. I would say. The, the reason everything gets done is because I've got two brilliant teams that, that work to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, we feel very fortunate if you've given up your time this week to, to speak with us because um, I know it's, it's been You're a really, really, really busy, busy week. So what do you love about your, your job? And then what's, what's really challenging about it? So I suppose um, what I love the most about working as a civil servant is the variety of work that you get to do. So when I joined the civil service, I joined into a kind of... Um, policy role in the Crown Prosecution Service. Um, so my job there was kind of figuring out what government policy, policy should be on things like violence against women, corporate manslaughter, so some kind of really interesting questions. Mm. Um, I've also, I then became a speech writer. So I've, um, I was a speech writer to Jack Straw first when he was Lord Chancellor. And oh, then wow. The Jack, the Jack Straw. Sorry? The Jack Straw. The Jack Straw, yes. If anyone remembers him. Wow, I do. And his son, Will Straw, who's also gone into politics. Um, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I met him a few times, yeah. So my job then was kind of trying to get into Jack's head and work out, A, what he would think about things, um, and then how he would say them when he kind of delivered speeches. So I would write the words that he would say in, in um, kind of whether it was a kind of keynote policy speech or... Um, uh, it might have been like he might have been opening an exhibition at the British Museum. I'd write everything that he said. Um, and then I worked with Ken Clark, and he was a bit of a different beast. He basically said what he wanted to say. So he needed <laughs> me to think through the ideas in advance, but he said it in the way that he would want to. And um, that's when I kind of then moved on. So speech writing was another big thing that I've, I've done. Um, I was also 
my, my favourite job so far in the civil service was working as a um, principal private secretary to a minister. So a guy called Lord McNally, who was the Lib Dem minister in the coalition for the Ministry of Justice. He was the only Lib Dem minister and the rest of the department were, were um, conservative ministers. So I was his private secretary, you might think, <laughs> he used to tell people, this is not my PA, she's my chief advisor. So <laughs> it's kind of like a chief of staff rather than a, um, a PA who does the diary. Um, that was absolutely brilliant because it was quite, um, civil servants aren't political, but it was a quasi-political role because he was the, he was the Lib Dem voice in the department. Um, so I was kind of I would I would go everywhere with him on visits. I'd be with him in Parliament. So you know I'd be pass, passing notes to him when he was uh, speaking or doing debates um, in all of the meetings that he went in and kind of advising him on um, aspects of policy. Sometimes trying to remind him of his kind of Lib Dem credentials as well. So that was that was brilliant. Um, so I guess, yeah, I don't know if that gives you a flavour of, oh, of the variety of things that you can do in the civil service. I was just going to ask you... That's the thing I love the most about it. Yeah, and your, your passion really, really comes across over the airwaves. I think... Um, one thing, I'm going to make two cultural references here that some of our yeah. listeners might not understand, but I think you will. And listeners, if you yeah. don't understand these, go and YouTube them. They're fantastic shows. Two TV shows. So we've got the British, um, The Thick of It, yeah. uh, political satire, uh, yeah. Amanda Iannucci. And then we've got, we've got the American West Wing. Now, yeah. which of those was closer to your experience of life, oh. life in politics? <laughs> I'm afraid to say the thick of it. <laughs> um, it's definitely not as rosy as the West Wing. Um, yes, Minister would be the other one, that it's pretty, it bears an awful lot of resemblance to. So I guess that the idea of um, the civil service sort of, well, working to ministers, but sort of having their own agenda definitely bears a lot of resemblance to reality. The kind of um, idea that you'd have special advisors, the kind of political advisors and the tensions between the political advisors and the civil servants, all of that is is really close to the truth. So if you want to know what it's like to be a civil servant, maybe the thing of it it's not entirely accurate, but it does give you an idea of some of the some of the challenges. It's a little bit derogatory of what we do, but um there, there's definitely quite a lot of resentment. And what do you think is the most challenging aspect of your work? So well, I've, yeah, quite a few challenging things. One would be the pace, which you've talked about. Lots of reacting really quickly, working at speed in response to kind of the different ministerial agendas. So you might have one minister one day and then have a totally a different minister. I mean, we've had loads of Secretary of State in the last um, two or three years, all with quite different agendas. So you have to react quite quickly to what your ministers want. Um, lots of reacting quickly to crises, the kind of COVID stuff is a, is a good example mm, of that. Yeah. Another thing I would say is um, doing things that you don't necessarily agree with. So you have to be able to um, set aside your own principle pull position um, and do whatever the government of the day wants. Now, you can advise them uh, about the risks of, of their approach, um, but you ultimately have to accept what the government's doing. So I've worked for Labour government, Conservative governments, and a coalition. I didn't. I I definitely didn't always agree with what they were doing. I certainly, as a speechwriter, had to write quite a lot of speeches where I I really didn't agree with um, what I was writing. So you have to be able to set that aside and accept that um, your role is to advise and to support the government of the day. And I guess if you want to be the one that's shaping um, the kind of strategic direction, ultimately you need to, politics is probably where you need to be rather than the civil service. And I guess the other thing that's quite challenging is there is quite a lot, and we talked about the thick of it, there is quite a lot of inertia in the system. So the um, stereotype of the civil service as being quite resistant to change and having a lot of bureaucracy, there is still quite a lot of that around. Now that is changing, it's changed a lot even since I've worked in the civil service, but I would say, um, yeah, that's, that's frustrating at times. Um, 
That's, it's really helpful um, hearing your insight because these are a lot of the skills we talk about in school about um, beyond the academic curriculum, but things like resilience, yeah. determination, flexibility, adaptability. And I think yeah. that, that's something we all struggle with in leadership is about integrity and yet being pragmatic. And, you know, yeah. you're not there to set the rules. So you have to do the best within your capacity to carry out what your, what right. your masters yeah. dictate. I mean, I've got friends who are incredibly principled people who I just don't think could cope with who don't understand how I can be writing policy that I don't agree with. So I guess you, you do need to be able to accept that um, if you want to go into civil yeah. service. Just stepping back a few years, um, not many years, a few years, <laughs> when, when, you were, when you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I can't, it's not very original, but I wanted to be a teacher. I think that was basically <sighs> the only job I knew about. Why, um, why on earth would I you want to do that? I mean, <laughs> that's not... Why on earth would you want to do that? It's a terrible career. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> so that was, that was very unoriginal. And that was for a while. Um, then at university, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. So I, I, I did a law degree. And I got accepted onto a training contract for a corporate law firm. Um, and I'm, I then realised at the end like I, that I was only choosing that because I thought that was the obvious thing to do. That's what everyone else was doing yeah. at the time. So I'm really glad that I kind of thought it through a bit more and um, decided to take a different different approach. Because I just think I was ne- it, it was never a natural step for me to be a commercial lawyer. Yeah. Um, and I think I would have regretted it. I think that's really helpful for our listeners because sometimes we've got a view of careers as are you going to be a lawyer or a doctor sort of thing and actually we're yeah. encouraging our students to, there's there's thousands of careers out there really interesting different pathways and it's about exploring those yeah, and i think also these days like you don't have to choose a career that is going to be your lifetime career mm. um so i just think like you there is it does seem like people are kind of moving around a bit more and doing different things and i think there's a lot of value to that so. mm. Yeah, we, we touched upon that in, in episode one. We were talking about what used to be a career for life is now a life of careers and all sorts yeah. of different changes. My brother went from law, uh, being a lawyer, to being a teacher. I've got friends that have okay. trans- tran- transferred in and out and across. And there is a lot more um, versatility and opportunity, isn't there, across different, different yeah, pathways. Yeah, that's definitely true. Definitely, yeah. So how do you go from your academic studies? Um, you know, what did you choose? What were you studying at university and... and at school and and you know how did that lead you into the, the civil service so i did um a kind of arty selection of um a level so i think it was french history geography and sociology and then crystal thinking or something like that um and then so i, I was definitely never i never had a kind of uh mathy brain and then i chose to do law um and I didn't really enjoy studying law, to be honest, but that, that was just the kind of, I, I found it quite dry. Um, but I'd never had the courage to change subjects when I was at university. And actually, I think I got quite a lot out of it in terms of the way I think. Yeah. Um, but then after I did my law degree, I did an, uh, an MPhil in criminology. And I think that's what I thought law was really going to be like. And I absolutely loved it. So I spent a year um, doing like a master's. Um, focusing on prisons. I was really interested in prisons. And then that's why I, after that, I um, I wanted to do something that was vaguely related to my studies. I, I was actually going to do a PhD. I got accepted onto a PhD, but then I, I bowed out at the last minute and just thought, I'm not sure I could handle four more years of academia. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, the, the Crown Prosecution Service at the time, which is part of government, but a bit at arm's length, were advertising for um, graduate jobs for people who wanted to do government policy and they had a policy unit that was full of lawyers and they want because the Crown Prosecution Service is all basically all lawyers mainly lawyers they wanted someone who had studied law who understood the legal system but had was coming at it from a different perspective so they mm. got some graduates in to help with policy and it was from there that so I, I kind of applied directly for a specific graduate job so it was a fairly junior job it was at kind of entry level and then I moved up pretty quickly um, in the same way that, that you would if you joined the fast stream. So I never applied for the fast stream. You, you might have heard of the fast stream for the civil service. It's yeah. like a, it's for graduates um, who want to progress quite quickly within the civil service. Um, 
but I, I kind of did it myself and chose the jobs that I wanted to do. So if you go into the fast stream, there's quite a, there's, a, there's pretty much guaranteed progression um, within a few years, but you don't have that much choice over what jobs you do in the first few years. Um, so I kind of, I just basically paved my own way. And for each job I applied for um, in my early days, my kind of the two things that I wanted and I would look for is one, a kind of new challenge yeah. and two, something I'd find interesting so that it would kind of hold my interest. So I, I never had a clear idea of where I wanted to end up. And you'd probably think that if you looked at all the various jobs that I've done. Um, I never thought, okay, I want to get to be a deputy director of the legal aid agency. Um, and I don't think this is where I'll stay for, for the long time either. Um, I just kind of, each job, I look for something that would help me develop a bit and that would interest me. So it's been Maybe a, not a kind of natural, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's been a, obviously a really interesting, interesting route that you've been on. Just looking back at what you've learned, is there any advice that you would have for any of our sort of 16, 17 year olds? Um, mm, good question. Um, I would say to, to keep an open mind for as long as you can and kind of explore lots of different options. Talk to as many people as you can about what they do um, yeah. and what they love about it. Um, I think like one big thing would be to kind of choose something that you think can hold your interest. There's, there's obviously a lot of moving around in careers these days, but so don't kind of worry about getting stuck in something you don't like, but, but do try and choose something that interests you because you'll spend a lot of your time working. And, um, and it, I think it's just really important to be doing some things that you're interested in. And I guess the other thing that I would say, which I definitely didn't do, but it kind of worked out is, um, maybe think about what's important to you as a person and what that might mean for work when you're older. I think it's quite hard to do that when, when you're still studying yeah. and you're, um, but, uh, like for example, I'm really glad that I didn't go into corporate law because family is really important to me and so is my life outside of work. So yeah. right now I have young kids and I'm so glad that I'm able to spend part of my week. I do a, I do a job share, um, at the moment. So, I share my role with another um, woman who's now a friend of mine and she does half the week, I do half the week and we have a bit of overlap in between. Um, but there's, there's so, ma so many kind of options and so much potential mm. for flexibility within the civil service that that is incredibly valuable to me now. I don't think I thought about that when I was thinking what kind of career I'd want to go into, but I think that's one of the things that I would have struggled with had I been at university and chosen to go into into corporate or commercial law. That's really interesting. So keep an open mind and yeah. cons and consider your priorities um, yeah. for life because we're going to spend most of our lives working, aren't we? If we're, yeah, exactly. um, so um, yeah. it's yeah. important. I've said in episode one about my love of teaching and how it also helps me support my family as well. And it's, it's a great career for for parents and um so it's definitely yeah, something we've mentioned definitely. we've mentioned yeah. before and i would say the same the same is true of the civil service it's incredibly accommodating of people's lives outside of work yeah yeah we've just got one more question lynn um it's been sure. really really interesting talking to you today so we, we really appreciate it and it's actually about the same question i ask all of my guests every week which is about covid19 um is there anything that you think lynn that's good that could come out of this obviously very, very difficult time for many of our, our families and our community mm. um, related to the world of work or things yeah. that, 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 that can help us as a society once this, this terrible thing has gone? Yeah, I think, I think one of the things that I kind of briefly mentioned earlier, um, flexibility in the world of work. So I think that, that it's been, I mean, it's been very difficult in some ways that so many people have, um, so many people in kind of office jobs have had to work from home but i think there's also it seems like there's been more of an acceptance that um life does happen around yeah. work and people have different working patterns different needs and i hope that kind of workplaces will more generally be accommodating to that in the future or at least that things like working from home and different working patterns that aren't the kind of standard nine till five in the office will become more widely accepted. I also think as a kind of civil servant, it's going to re you know, reshape the way that government works for a long time, I'm sure. Um, mm. So maybe it will help us to kind of think again about government 
priorities or think in a different way about those, I'm sure it will it will make us um, plan better for future unlikely eventualities. So, um, but you know, better than we we did in the past because we're certainly learning a lot from from uh, handling this current crisis. And that's a really positive place. Um to stop. So thank you very much for your time, Lynn. Good to speak to you today. And um, as you readjust to your getting back to work, well, we, hope it goes, we hope it goes really, really well for you and the important work that you're doing. So thanks again for your time. Thank you so much for having me. I was going to say, I'll see you at church, but actually we're on Zoom now. So I'll see you virtually. Right, so I'll, I'll see uh, you on the screen. I'll see you on the screen. Absolutely. Yeah. But take care. Thank you for your time. All right. Take okay. care. Bye-bye.